I want to talk about the three things that I think dating are for, okay? Uh, I, I, this is my personal thing. You may have a list of five, ten. You can go look on the web and find whatever else. But this is what I think. The first thing is, the first reason I think we date is to learn more about ourselves. The second reason is to learn more about our future spouse. And the third reason is to learn more about the love of God. And so I want you to kind of dive in and talk a little bit about the, the purpose and, and learning more about ourselves in dating. Yeah, I think for me, in our relationship, yeah. I learned so much about myself. Mm -hmm. I think that was the most learning experience I've had <laughs> yeah. uh, in a really long time. And I think um, looking back at it now, I was such a quiet and like closed off person mm -hmm. that honestly, that was crippling me to what God was calling me to be. God was calling me to be a person that's here right now, the person that's yeah. speaking right now. My communication in the past was never my strong suit. Mm -hmm. So I think God really showed me a lot about myself that I yeah. wanted to uh, get better at, get better at speaking because God has given me ideas and I want to speak them out and yeah. just declare them over every area of my life. So yeah. that that's, was something I learned. That's powerful. That's powerful. I love that. Learn more about your future spouse. I think this is so important and truly, you know, the way that, that I created the, or I have held myself accountable in our relationship and everything is exactly in that way is, is that I'm learning her like she's my friend. The Bible doesn't really say much about dating. It doesn't say anything about dating. There's no context for it. But what I do know is that the Bible says, hey, there's no greater love than to lay down your life for your friend, for your brother. And so if I take that same exact model, knowing that she's my friend, girlfriend, right, in cultural terms, then, then I should be willing to love her so very well that I want to know more and more about her. And here's what I'm not going to confuse it with. I think this is where we get really confused in our, in our society is that we treat dating like it's the tryout for marriage. And here's why it can't really be the trial for marriage because you're not one. There are some things that have even broken or even been manifested in our relationship since we've become one that weren't manifested whenever we were two different people, yeah. when we were friends, whenever we were, we were growing towards a relationship and loving one another. And so, so a lot of people get really frustrated because they're trying to work on something that, that may not take place until they're actually married, until they're actually one. This is what happens whenever, whenever we, we, we are married, we become one. And so, so I think it's important for us to know that and know that context going into the relationship that dating, the purpose of it is to know your spouse, to know more about her. And here's another thing is if you really want to know how well your spouse is going to love you, look and see how well they love other people. Mm -hmm. Look and see how well they love their brothers and their friends. Look and see how well they're loving their family. These are great indicators. And so these are the things that I'm looking for when I'm looking for my spouse. And I found her and I saw the really great things inside of her yeah. um, that I was looking for. So, so the third thing is learn more about God's love. Yeah, for real, babe, that was good. I love, I love that. Thank you. Um, so the third purpose, learning more about God's love for us. Um, I think this is a really important one. I think this may be the last on the three, yeah. but it's really important. Um, I think sometimes we kind of forget about this one. But for me, I feel like during this time, I learned so much about God's love just because of what we went through in our relationship with our fam my family not fully supporting our relationship at the beginning. Mm -hmm. That was definitely a hard thing for us to go through. It was a lot of yeah. adversity in our relationship. But we uh, stuck together and we learned so much from God and just how God loves His people. Yeah. Even if they have wrong ideas, mm -hmm. even if mm -hmm. they're not... Uh, being like Christ, mm -hmm. he still loves us. And that yeah. was just so uh, good for me to learn. Yeah. And I think during that time, I also just strengthened my relationship with God so much. Yeah. Um, our dating time was yeah. just so good for my relationship with God. And I really understood what it meant to have a real deep relationship with God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that we didn't always hear what we, what we wanted to hear from God during our dating. Yeah. Especially in the times whenever we were supposed to be honoring her family and honoring my family mm -hmm. and, and, and when her family wasn't 100% on board with, with our relationship, it took a lot for us to hear the Lord say, honor her father and honor her mother. Yeah. And, and through that, though, 
he taught us how faithful he was going to be. And so there was a little bit of some trust that I think that we established with the Lord in that time yeah. that that I'm I know even now, like we're still walking on that same trust that we established just by being obedient to what he said. Mm -hmm. And when he was saying, I'm going to be faithful, I'm going to bring your family together. And in our marriage and in our wedding, we just saw the beauty of that and, and your awesome vision. If you haven't heard Michaela's vision, go and ask her about it. She has an amazing vision and we saw it come to fruition in our marriage and in our in our wedding. So I want to move on. Marriage. Marriage. This is this is the part. You know, I, I am not some guru in marriage. Like I said, I've only been married for six months, right? So I've not been married for a very long time. But over these past six months, I believe the Lord has given me so much revelation, and especially for young adults. I believe that the enemy is out there trying to destroy the relationships, the marriages of young adults, of the young people, of, of, of people in their 20s who are married. I, I just feel such an attack from the enemy on the church and on the people. I mean, the, the rates of divorce, all of those things are just just blown out of proportion. And, and I just think the enemy is just trying to divide us, divide us, divide us. Um, and, and, and so I believe, though, that there is life in Jesus Christ. Yeah. I believe that there is life in our marriage. And, and, and when another marriage is winning, know that this is not God saying you can't win. This is God saying, hey, this is, a, this is, a, this is proof of my faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And so, so take it as that. And, and I think that that's also another thing is just a lot of comparison. But, but we can talk about that another, another time. I want to get right into this. I want you to explain our motto, yeah. how we live our life um, for our marriage and, yeah. and what it means for us. Yeah, so our marriage motto is we're on the same team. Come on now. And, whoa, oh. I love that. Um, and it means exactly that, that we're on the same team. Yeah. And even whenever we feel like we're on different teams or we feel divided, we have to say this to remind ourselves that, hey, like, He's not trying to hurt me. I'm not trying to hurt him. And yeah. we have to recenter ourselves and live our lives like we are one because yeah. we are one because we are married. Yeah. But also that we're on the same team. This is supposed to be a fun life, a good life for us to live. Yeah. And if we're living in like arguments or disagreements and yeah. we're not talking about it, then we're not on the same team because a team yeah. has to talk to one another. Yes. Communication is so important. Whenever we say this, we just refocus ourselves. And I'm like, okay, wait, I wasn't communicating right. Yeah. I need to refocus myself. So yeah. I love our motto so much. We say it so often yeah. and it's like, it just, Help yeah. me get back in there, you know? Yeah. I think it just reminds us. It reminds us that we're not against each other. Yeah. I think it's important for us to remind ourselves in all relationships that, hey, I'm not against you. We're not against each other. Now that we're one, we can both make that statement together and we can say, hey, I'm not against you. You're not against me. And so I'm going to hold myself accountable and you're going to help me hold myself accountable to, to not making it about me and about you, but about us yeah. together. We're a team. And like she said, communication is key. And, and here's a really great thing is that as we communicate more and as we submit to one another even more, the scriptures tell us, submit, um, husbands submit to your wives, wives submit to your husbands. I, I think the more that we do that, the Lord is showing us even greater level of communication. There are some times when Michaela says something physically with her mouth that I'm able to discern in her spirit what she's actually saying. Mm -hmm. And so whether that's for the good or for the bad, we're able to call things out in one another in the same way is true. She's able to discern things that I'm saying. I may be saying something physically or I may be feeling some way physically, but spiritually she knows exactly what to go to, exactly what to speak, through, uh, speak to. We don't have to be up in the air like, you know, is it this? Is it work? Is it, is it this issue? It's like, no, no, no. We know exactly what it is because the more and more that we communicate and submit to one another, the Lord reveals new ways that we can communicate even in our spirits. And so I think that's so very powerful. Um, I know you talked a little bit about communication and how yeah. you've, you've already grown in it. And so we don't really have to even go back to it. I think I just want to affirm you and say you've done such a great job of communicating and, and, and communication, though, at the beginning and, and early in our relationship, it may have not been your strongest suit. You've become one of the greatest communicators, especially with me. Um, like I said, even further than just in the physical of speaking to one another. And so I thank you so much for for acknowledging that, humbling yourself and becoming greater at it in the same way I'm becoming greater at it. I'm not perfect at it um, in, in any way um, at all. And so so I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think another issue with a lot of the marriages um, is is that, and this was a big thing in you learning your communication and me learning our, my communication, is that we bring so much from other relationships into this relationship. Mm -hmm. The relationships we've had with our friends, the relationships we've had with our family, oftentimes we take those in and we project them on our spouse or we project them on our partner. And we say, well, 
well, my, my father treated me this way whenever he was feeling this way. So you must be treating me this way because you're feeling that way. Right. We, we assume we say, oh, oh, well, well, my mom, she only felt this way whenever she she was just done and she had enough with my father. And so so naturally she must be done with me or in friendships. We think, oh, well, they they lost my trust there. And so she's going to lose my trust in the same exact way or, or I, I'm going to be under attack because of them. And here's the deal. We, we, we've got to learn. We've got to learn to create spaces for each other to yeah. be able to to learn each other and, and, and not assume that, that their intentions or their motives are something else. And so I want you to talk a little bit um, about that and about creating new things in our marriage. Like I said, I talked about the old things and this whole entire series is about the new. And so I want you to kind of talk about creating new things in our marriage and and what that looks like. Yeah. So something that Sam really taught me was kind of what he just talked about was we can we can control what we bring into the relationship Mm -hmm. and we can cultivate what we want to see, too. Mm -hmm. So I think something that we've really, really tried to make a point in our relationship is peace in our household Mm -hmm. and we always have peace in our household we direct ourselves in peace in love and that's just something we've created Mm -hmm. in our marriage that maybe wasn't in our family's lives or in our past but we chose to create something new to break down those walls and generational curses Mm -hmm. of Uh, arguing or whatever it may be Mm -hmm. and we're like we're gonna have peace in our house and that is something we chose to cultivate in our relationship and there's so many other things like that we could go through but I think that's one that kind of stood out to me yeah 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 yeah. I think one of the ones that sticks out to me is that we create a space for each other to make mistakes yeah in your marriage once again I'm not a guru but this is just so biblical and this is how the father loves us he gives us the opportunity gives us space to be able to make mistakes and to all, always having his arms ready and wide open. You look at the story of the prodigal son. He's always wide open, ready for us to come back, and he's always ready to give us more. And so I think we've done a really good job, and we're continuing to do this, yeah. is to make room for us, allow there to be room for us to have mistakes. I think that we don't, we don't give each other enough grace in our relationships, that when someone makes a mistake, that we say, you know what, it's okay. It, it's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to get down on yourself. And I'm not going to get down on you. And I'm not going to yell at you. And even though this may be something that we were used to before, yeah. that as soon as we made mistakes, people got right onto us and said, "You're wrong. You did this and you did that." We create a space for us to be able to make mistakes. Yeah. I think that's the only way that we can grow together. And then when we create more space for each other to make mistakes, we're more transparent with each other. Mm-hmm. We're more honest with each other. She doesn't have to be afraid that when she tells me about a mistake she's made and, and she's coming to me and she's wanting, wanting my opinion and wanting my love, that, that I'm not going to turn her away. I'm always going to receive her. And so I think that those are some of the really good things that we've created. I, and I want to speak that over your marriage, over your relationships, over your singleness, wherever you are in your life. Hey, create something new. OK, whatever the old or whatever the past has brought in or whatever things or baggage you brought in from somewhere else, create something new. And so I want to pray over you right now. God, I am just praying over each and every ear, each and every person who is here. God, that they would they would they would look at their relationships totally different. They would look at being single totally different. They would look at their marriages totally different. God, Lord, I pray that we would be like you, mm-hmm. that we would become more and more like you as we grow in relationships. God, I'm just speaking right now. I don't know. I'm just speaking this over someone's relationship that there would be life that would come to it. Something that seemed like it was dead, something that looked like it was gone, something that looked like it was never coming back. I'm just I'm just feeling so pressed on my heart to speak. There is life. And only whenever you're in the situation, Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In your name we pray. 